I know YouTube is not going to be, nope. YouTube is not going to alert you guys that I am live, but I am here live. And like I said, I know y'all like when I mix things up. Out and about again on some adventures. Anyway, I uh, just want to do this quick video. It's not going to take long. I know not many people are in here. Some of you guys might watch it later. But this video pretty much is going to be pertaining to President Donald Trump, or your former president, President Donald Trump. And again, for those that keep on trying to tell me he's not the president, he's former president, I don't care. If I talk about President Obama, I'm going to call him President Obama. If I talk about President Clinton, I'm going to call him President Clinton. If I talk about President Obama, oh, Biden, <laughs> if I talk about President Biden, I'm going to talk about President Biden. Any former president, I'm just going to always just say president. Like if you meet them, you're going to say Mr. President, Mr. President, or I'll just say President Obama. That's what I'll say. So um, anyway, like I was saying, um, this video pretty much is going to be about you guys see that in the title. And I don't know what just happened. It disappeared. But anyway, make sure you all hit that like button so that this video can be circulated within a YouTube algorithm. And also so the video can continuously be recommended to you. Hopefully I sound good. Uh, OK, so. You guys all know about what happened to the slain police officer by a career criminal who was in and out of jail 21 times on crazy charges. And it was just a routine stop. And the officer unfortunately lost his life. It was just like the most freak accident way because the, the police officer had on his vest and the bullet hit him in the stomach right underneath his vest and he lost his life. So it was a very, very tough situation because he left behind a one year old child, barely one years old, a newborn practically, and then his wife of uh, three years. So you guys saw the video I did yesterday where three, four, three, three presidents. Well, it's, it's funny. Four presidents. Yeah, I'm saying it that way. Four presidents all went to New York. President Barack Obama, President Clinton. President Biden, President Trump, all of them were in New York at the same time. The only difference is President Trump went to go honor the fallen NYPD officer while President Clinton, President Biden, President Barack Obama, they all went to go try to raise money and have a concert. Who they have to throw the concert on of all people? Lizzo. I told y'all, it's, it's, it's amazing that they go get the most degenerate folks you can think of to do, to do their biddings. There's always got to be some black person, some black rapper, black slutty like acting person cardi b and um meg the styling and who uh biden just had somebody else in the white house that a, a black rapper too just look 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 how they pandered that's that's our best anyway that's not what the subject is about so i said that to say all this president trump went to a funeral of a fallen nypd while they went there to go try to raise funds what made it even uh insult to injury is that President Biden called the New York mayor and apologized to the New York mayor for the fallen NYPD officer. What, what the heck is that? You call the New York mayor to apologize for the fallen NYPD officer instead of calling the man's family, or calling the wife. Anyway, before I get into the main meat of the story as well, um, you guys all know about Hulk, Hulk, y'all try to tell me that y'all had so many different versions of how to say this woman name, but the governor of New York, she showed up to the funeral. They ran her out. They didn't want to have anything to do with this woman. They yelled at her. They said, get out of here. They didn't want anybody from the city council. They didn't want any of them at this officer's funeral. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, folks. OK, so let's get to the subject at hand. President Trump bought food for all the officers. He bought them burgers, fries, shakes, drinks, et cetera. He bought it for all of them that was at the funeral. OK, so that just goes to show you how much of a caring individual he is when it comes to things like that. Um, now, the main meat of this is the fact that I did not know this. And several of you guys got a hold of me. and Y'all told me that um, President Trump also paid off the fallen NYPD's officer mortgage. The widow, she doesn't have nothing to pay. But property tax. So here it is. Tunnel to Towers will pay off NYPD officer Jonathan Diller's mortgage on Long Island's home. NYPD officer Jonathan Diller's family. You know what I can do this like this make it sense. I'm still looking at y'all. Says NYPD. Y'all even see that? 
NYPD officer Jonathan Diller's family will have their mortgage paid and $10,000 towards his first year old son education thanks to two donations announced Thursday ahead of his wake. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation announced it will pay off the mortgage of his um, of this home. Chairman and CEO Frank Siller said he spoke with the family to share the news. Every day, Officer Diller donned his officer. If y'all know what don means, he donned his D-O-N-N-E-D means he put on his his um his uniform. He donned his uniform. There was a risk he may not come home, Siller said in a statement. We will honor him not only for his sacrifice, but for his unwavering resolve to protect the people of New York City. Tunnel to Towers is honored to ensure his family can stay in their home forever. Okay. Siller started the foundation after his son, Stephen Siller, was killed helping others September 11th after the World Trade Center attack. The organization now pays off mortgages for families of first responders killed in the line of duty who pass away from 9-11 related illnesses. If y'all don't know this, I'm going to kind of expound upon it a little bit. After uh, 9-11, there was a lot of crazy like uh, debris that people were inhaling and they end up developing all kinds of multiple issues regarding neurological. Some of them developed a whole lot of cancer as well. Um, so anybody that is a police officer, first responder that dies in the line of duty, this organization pays their mortgages off. But also anybody that was a first responder <clears throat> that ended up having post 9-11 related illnesses, you know, multiple sclerosis, whatever the case may be, if they pass away from it, this organization pays that off. OK. The Promise of Hope Foundation said it will cover the funeral cost of Diller. The public tip line cop shop also pledges $10,000 towards a future education cost for his young son. There was no need for cop shop to post our standing of $10,000 cash reward in this tragic and cold blooded murder of police officer Diller because the alleged suspects were apprehended at the scene. Therefore, cop shop has gifted this $10,000 to officer Diller's family. This is a small gesture to let them know that the service and sacrifice of his father and of this husband will never be forgotten by the New York City and its business community, Chairman John Provetto said in a statement. Diller served with an NYPD for three years and is being remembered by fellow officers as a cop's cop. He was shot and killed during a traffic stop Monday, which I explained it already. Former President Donald Trump is expected um, to uh, attend Thursday's wake, which had already happened. So anyway, um, to my subscribers that got a hold of me and told me about this, I'm glad that y'all let me know that because it is just to show you guys that there's a different levels of respect for those of those those that are in blue. I do certain um, speaking engagements where we do events like Back to Blue, and I go and speak on behalf of them. And um, actually, in one of the cities, I'm part of a council board that actually uh, we're we're involved with police to citizens arrest. You know, we 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 go to this to the we go downtown, we go before a board, I'm on the board, and we pretty much discuss certain uh, encounters and things that people have with the police. They, they're, they're, they're very transparent with it. You get to see all the things that played out, you get to read the reports, all that. So it is a crazy job that they have to do. Now, one of the things that happened that I say that is just it just kills me is that the past four years, we all seen what happened with the George Floyd stuff. The media painted police in such a bad way, it had everybody pretty much wanting to, um, it had everybody, not everybody, it had people who didn't know how to think with intelligence, but all they, they did, they were driven by emotions. It had all of them going after police officers and hating on police officers, right? That's what it did. And the issue with that is that a few police, a few bad police officers, a few prejudiced police officers, a few racist police officers, a few sexist police officers. These are the only ones that the media focused on. So they painted posts in such a bad way that those people who are easily emotionally driven by stimulus and they don't think they would just go out there and push the dang on agenda, the rhetoric that the media wants them to go out there and do. They go out there screaming. Yellow. We were at home and, and, and my uh, we were at home in my residence in St. Louis. Right. And there were some people walking down the street. 
and it was out there beating drums and everything. It was like a, it was all about like, you know, it was all about being black and all this. But what's really interesting about it is that there were maybe like six black people and then the rest of the 30 folks were white and they were all out there saying, hey, hey, ho, ho, these racist cops have got to go. Hey, hey. And it's like, what? What? And what gets me is that the minute some stuff go down and they call the police, what if the police, what, what, what if the police said, no, y'all said these, you know, y'all, y'all said these cops have got to go. Y'all, you, you, you already put it out there like all police officers are bad. Now it's a two way thing. And I think, you, of course, y'all, we know this is done by design. Police officers now have it in their head to where if they go and arrest anybody of any color in their skin, which that's everybody has color, but they go arrest anybody black or brown, they got to put themselves in the mind frame of, oh, I got to be this calm. I have to be, you know, and then the people who are getting pulled over, the media put it out there that all cops are getting ready to pull you over and, you know, I pulled you over for a boy. Is this your car? Is this your vehicle you drive? They put it out there so bad that both sides got animosity towards each other. Or one side might feel some type of way. One side may feel like the police officers feel like they can't really go and do their job thoroughly because they got to be on pins and needles to make sure that they don't offend you so that you might come back and sue them. Yet at the same time, the ones who are being pulled over, being told that the police pulled you over, you should instantly get offended and get pissed off and get all mad because these white cops should not be pulling you over. And the only reason why they're pulling you over is because you're driving while black. Dumb stuff. Two sons, 22 and 20. Me and my wife talked to my sons about what happens when you get pulled over, right? But we didn't do the dang on thing that y'all see going around with this. Son, when the police pull you over, put both hands on the steering wheel. Don't move. And when the cop pulls over and he walks up to the, don't look at him. Look forward. And when he asks you a question and if he say, can I see your license and registration? You repeat back to him, sir, I'm going to reach over and get my license and registration for, come on now. We told them it's going to be basic conversation. We told them exactly how it's going to go. They're going to pull you over. You pull over, turn your hazard lights on, put the car in park. When the police even pull you over, if you want to, you can already grab your license and your registration. Just sit there. The police going to come up to you. He's going to come up to the car and say, how are you doing? You're going to just respond like you would with anybody else. You're going to say, I'm doing fine. He's going to say, you know, do you know why I pulled you over? If you don't know, just say, uh, no, I don't. And the officer say, well, the reason why I pulled you over is because you was doing this and that. Or the reason why I pulled you over is because you got a tail light out. The reason why I pulled you over is because of da-da-da-da-da. So with that all being said, can I see your license registration? You give it to him. He's going to take your license registration. He's going to look at it, look at you. Then he's going to say, okay, I'm going to go back to my car. Just sit tight, and I'll come back and let you know how this is going to go. You're going to go to his car, sit five minutes, run your information, blah, 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 blah. He's going to come back to the car. He's going to say, okay, so, uh, young man, um, I see that, you know, you know, you got a clean driving record, but I just want to let you know that you got a tail light that's out. Go and get that fixed for me, okay, if you don't mind. Or you're going to say, okay, so this time I'm going to let you off the hook, you know, because, you know, you were going 5, 10 miles over the speed limit, da, 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 da. Or he's going to say, you know, so I am going to write you a citation. It's only going to be for $50, and da, 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 da. And then he's going to say, you have any questions or anything else for me? You're going to say no. He's going to say, well, you have a lovely day. That's how it goes 90% of the time. That's how it goes. But the dang on media would have it to where black people get pulled over. Y'all, I got nice cars. I never got pulled over by a police officer. And he's not, I've, I've never been pulled over by a police officer. And a police officer asked me, is this my car? They don't care if it's your car. That's why they ask you for license and registration. Because when they get the license and registration, they're going to know if it's your car or not. So all these people, I got pulled over all because I drive a good car. The police officer going to ask me, is that my car? Stop the BS. Stop it. Anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. I went on into a whole nother realm of this. But the reason why I did that is because it's just to show you that the police officers of them have been painted in such a bad way. And then they've been trying to train a lot of people to respond to police in a certain way. All they've done is created tension and animosity amongst citizens and police officers. And that's why these illegals can come over to our country and feel like they can just go and fight our police officers and beat them up and everything like that because this is the, this is what's been painted. This is all they've been shown. I know y'all heard me say this before, but it just it has to be said because what happened to that police officer was completely unnecessary. And if our justice system was doing what it was supposed to be doing, New York, y'all are crazy. Illinois, New York, y'all are nuts. California, y'all are completely nuts with y'all law system to where this dude, this dude been in and out 21 times. 
I told them, y'all, you y'all, you know, people better be lucky that I chose a career in medicine because if not, if I would have went to been in law, Ty, we have a young man here. He's been in and out of jail ten. To, what do you mean ten times? Ten times for doing what? Oh, gun charges, domestic abuse. Okay, okay. What's the maximum I can give him? So I would be the person known as, hey, you don't want to go see Judge Ty Smith. You no, know, you don't want to see Judge Ty Smith. If you got, if you've been in and out of jail more than 10 times, he tied the judge. Ty Smith tries to go for the maximum that he can give you. And when he does give you the maximum, he wants you to serve half of that before you eligible for parole. A message has to be sent. It's amazing that people sit there and they are fighting, get pissed off about, dang, they gave him that much time. How come he, they gave him that much time? I came, he's a black. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't have been doing the crime. What are we talking about here? You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you, you, I learned, you learn a lot. From being a father. My sons, while they were growing up, if they did things that were wrong or disobedient, what I called it. Uh -uh. Not only are you about to get your butt whooped. That's me. Some of y'all may not be about that. That's your, that's your prerogative. Uh, Steven Soar with the $2 Super Chat says, big love from England time, my good sir. Appreciate that, Steven. God bless you. So um, whenever my sons got punished, there wasn't, there wasn't any argument on how much time i'm going to give you or how much how long i'm going to take something away from you it doesn't matter what you need to be focused on is what you did man that's messed up he only he only he only sucker punched a woman and he broke her jaw like the dude that that's that literally happened in new york he sucker punched a woman in the face broke her jaw and got right back out see i couldn't be no judge okay you want to sucker punch people you get five years in prison no parole five years you're going to serve it that's it. But I was only uh, my mental illness. I don't care. Your mental illness don't get dealt with while you're in prison. Five, you got five years to get your mental illness in check. No parole. And guess what? I don't matter. I'm already gonna have it in my head. You're not gonna get no appeal. When I got in prison and three years in, I'm a changed man. Well, good, because you got two more years to become a more changed man. That's it, folks. I don't, I don't, I don't get y'all. We know, we know there's a reason. We know there is a reason. Right now, everything is about sympathy for the devil. It's about sympathy for the devil and it's to show you guys and it's to test you and i the american people to see if we're going to actually live up to what our constitution tells us that we're supposed to live up to don't forget that second amendment is for domestic and foreign period period that could not have been my mom that could not have been my wife that that dude punched and broke her jaw i'm just telling you then for him to get out matter of fact yeah i y'all i'm just being honest because this stuff pisses me off i hate to say it this way that guy that killed this police officer, I hope he goes somewhere where there are people. Yeah, you know, there's two things. I'm just telling y'all. I got family that's been locked up and things like that. Two, there, it's it's amazing that they have these this code, right? It's a code in prison. You can be all kinds of bad people. You can be all, there can be all types of criminals that go to prison, right? But there are two particular ones that don't like to go to prison. Pedophiles, cop killers. So for this dude, unless they put him on another island somewhere, cop killers going to prison don't do well. They don't do well. So um, whatever happens, happens. To me, Y'all might not agree with this, but to a certain degree, y'all know what happened in Russia with those terrorists, right? Y'all know what Vladimir Putin and them did. Cut the man's ear off, stuck it in his mouth and made him chew on it. Hooked the man dingling and balls up to a battery and electrocuted him till he started foaming out the mouth. We need to take a, a page from Russia. <laughs> I'm just saying, make it a public display. Some of the kids that we've mentored, right? We got certain ones that are super hard-headed. If Mr. Ty had to get called and show up there, I'm embarrassing them in front of the whole class. 
I'm not going to take them off to the side. And no, I'm doing it in front of the whole class because I want them to be embarrassed. I want them to feel ashamed. I want them to have it in their head. Should that behavior happen again, I'm going to show up and do the same thing because you think you're tough all in school. You're trying to possibly be a little pre-bully. You, you're acting up. When I come to your classroom, the teachers already know that we're coming there. When we come there, we are going to embarrass you in front of everybody. Make a public display of you. Yes. But Ty, that can... Who told y'all this dumb stuff about oh, that can psychologically damage the psychologically damage him? Nothing. The only way it's gonna psychologically damage is gonna psychologically damage the bad behavior that he was about to become. It's psychologically damaging a possible characteristic that this person was gonna carry on throughout their life. That's why you break things at a young age. But in, in here in America, oh please, soft on crime, petty on bullies, they're petty on criminals, they're petty on thugs. Oh, no, they can't post. Well, keep them in there. Pretty soon. I don't know, y'all. I might get to a point to where the justice is going to, it's going to be citizens of justice. Citizens, I'm sorry, justice. So, for example, make, make, matter of fact, y'all, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button for me. So, it's gotten to a point to where, for example, there's a, there's a, uh, my cousins have sent me this video of what happened up here in Chi-Town, right? This dude literally was sexually assaulting a girl this man in the, and this this happened in the hood right this man we, they don't know where this guy came from but apparently he followed this, he followed this he followed this little this little girl home right he was caught sexually assaulting this girl in the hood right he watched this girl he watched her go home they knew that the girl i mean y'all unfortunately this is something that happens in chicago as far as parent single mothers they tell their kid to go home, lock the door. This man watched this girl long enough to know that her mom went home, that she didn't have a dad. He watched her long enough to where finally she goes home. He comes through a window. She's being sexually, I can't say the R word. She's being R word, right? Just so happen to be people in the hood that seen this man walking around. And when you from the hood, like on our block, we knew everybody, every car, we wrote down their license registration on their plates and everything. We wrote that down. When somebody was came through the hood that we didn't know of, hey, who's dude right there? Who is that? Go ahead, find out who that is. Oh, we don't know who it is. Oh, well, maybe he's just a crackhead. You know, he might just be, he walk up and down the street all the time, but watch him. They watched him. And the minute they seen that man hanging out in the back of that house, five minutes, they hear this little girl screaming. They broke the door down. They pulled that man out and beat the living daylights out of him. And I absolutely loved it. They stumped that man so bad. Listen, they, one of the guys, he didn't show his face. He deliberately stumped the man's balls and beat the man's balls and beat the man's balls and penis with a brick to where it was like no saving it. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. They beat the man to where they couldn't even recognize him. He was completely broken and guess what when the police showed up and the ambulance showed up they put that man on a stretcher they hurled him off and the police said everybody around here y'all have a good day love it absolutely love it so this is why i tell people sometimes i say you know what it's crazy for me to kind of say it in this particular matter but those are some of the things I and I mean, I, I, the residents that we have right now, we all in suburban neighborhoods, guys. And what, right. But I talk to my neighbors like this, too. That's one of the things I can say. That the hood, so to speak, has a one up, because if something like that go down, there's going to be street justice. It's not going to be call the police, wait for the criminal, try to get him. No, you're not getting old. You're not getting guys. Look, <laughs> my wife hate when I talk about stuff like this. In our house, in the hood, we had it to where there was a weapon in almost every corner. We had a knife up there in the uh, up there in the trimming. We had a knife on the carpet in the, under the carpet in the hallway. There was there was three knives by the door. There was a gun under this pillow here. There was a disc right for a window they could possibly break in. There was a knife above that window. So if they come through the window, we can just grab it and stab them in the back of the neck. I, I, I hate to say that we had to live that way, but yet at the same time, in the world that we that we're in today, boom. It, that's it. Tell my sons, hey, something come by this door. Here's this. By here, here's that. By that door, here's that. Nobody should even be coming up to our house anyway, as it is. 
So what am I saying that for? It sounds weird, but that's one of the that's one of the benefits of being and kind of growing up in the hood. Is that once you establish yourself there and you knew who was around you, you knew your folks and everything like that. We knew who wasn't from the hood. We knew who was from the hood. We knew if somebody came and visited, we knew who's that car right there. Oh, that's that's our boyfriend. OK, well, we're going to see. Hey, that's what y'all say. That's our boyfriend. Right. Why is there a different car? Right. That, this is what we do. And it's so amazing that now if people in the suburban areas do that, they try to label them as Karens. Ain't that crazy? So what would we be labeled? Because we did, we literally did that in the hood, in the ghetto, in the projects. Everybody did that. They would purposely go out there and look. Hey, who is this pulling up right here, man? Oh, okay. All right. But then when white people do it, oh, here go the Karens. Yeah, because you're not from their neighborhood. It's the same thing. And so what? If you're not doing nothing, who cares? So I'm saying to say all this, folks. You see that whatever system is behind putting this stuff in place in law to where they're almost making the wear. Y'all are scared to defend yourself. Y'all don't believe this, man. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Well, somebody broke in my house and I heard, see, that's the issue that a lot of y'all have. Y'all going based off of, I heard, I heard. Y'all know how many times where I lived, it's, it's Chicago, Central Illinois. Y'all know how many times I lived where somebody tried to break into somebody else and somebody tried to beat somebody up and they got stabbed, they got beat, all these things happened to them and the police didn't say nothing. They didn't do nothing. And that's one of the benefits of being in the hood, too. You know how nobody talked. Hey, uh, okay, so guys, we, we, we understand that this man was attacking. We understand that this man was doing this. But do anybody know who was the one that beat the man up? No, we don't know. No, officer. It was a bunch of people that was beating him up. We don't know. That's it. And the police officers know that. They know it. So now what I'm saying that is that in today's climate, for some odd reason, they got you, the American people, scared to defend yourself. I don't know who told y'all that. We come across this stuff every single week in Chicago. They just don't put the stories out there for y'all to see because they want you guys to believe that if you defend yourself, you're going to be the one in trouble. For example, the store in Chicago that I did about a few weeks ago with the guy that came in and tried to rob this jewelry store, right? He tried to rob this jewelry store. And when he did it, he got shot. And so what's crazy is that a lot of people got pissed off because I, I, I was showing you guys in the news article, the news report in the news televised part, it showed a woman going, well, I don't know. You know, I think we should wait for the police officers to, to come in. What? Police officers come after the fact. They don't come during. They don't come during. Scott Dixon with the $10 super chat says, preach bro hams. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that. So what I'm saying is this, that guy that robbed that store, was trying to rob the jewelry store in Chicago, he got completely shot by the store owners, right? They interviewed a woman. She's saying, well, you know, this just can be pretty scary because I think the only people that should be carrying guns are like the police. Are you nuts, woman? But then when you get robbed and get beat up, by the time the police get there, it's, you, there's not the police. I'm telling you all the truth. I work with police, okay? They are, they don't even want to, I'm just being honest. I'm not going to say their, their names, but the police officers that watch my channel, they know. They don't even want to fill out the report. When police show up, if you've been, look, I'm, if your bike got stolen, if you got robbed, if you got sucker punched, if you, something like that, honestly, the police, they're going to do what they're supposed to do, but they really don't because they know they're not going to catch the person. They know it. They know they matter. It's not even on their top of the list of things to deal with. That's why. You should be prepared to have your own street justice. Some of y'all might not be for the Second Amendment, but I'm a huge advocate of it. I'm big time on it. And then our, our residents in Missouri, you don't even have to have it. You don't even have to have no permit in Missouri. You can just go up there with your license to a gun shop. If everything, they check your license, run it, everything, they give you the gun. You can carry concealed in Missouri without having to have a permit or license. And not only that, even if the police, the police can't do nothing about it. The police don't even, they, they don't. The police can't come to you and go, hey, do you got your permit? Do you have your license? Uh, I got a gun, but I don't have to have one. That's it. That's it. So back to that store. The woman sat there and said, I think that only law enforcement should be involved with protecting. No, they shouldn't. 
you should be involved with protecting yourself. So what made a lot of people mad is that then next thing you know, there be, there came a message across that said um, that the man, the store owner of the jewelry store that shot the assailant, they say he's in custody. So some of y'all took that the wrong way. So let me tell you how this works. When they say that he was in custody, it doesn't mean that that man got arrested. When you are in police custody, it does not mean that you are arrested. Y'all do know there's a such thing called protective custody, right? So when they said that the man that shot that robber was in police custody, it does not mean that he was arrested and went to jail. When you do something like that, you are in police custody because they want to question you. They want to make sure that that gun that you had is okay. They want to make sure that your FOI card is good. They just all they do. They want to make sure that you don't need psychiatric help after the incident. Y'all, this is what the news don't tell y'all. Y'all just get told like, man, the person that shot them, now the police got them. No, they don't. They don't. That's what I'm saying. Don't fall for these rumors a lot of you guys keep on hearing. Y'all heard of protective custody? That's what happened. He just got... To, they told him to come down to the station. You're going to be in our custody so we can question you, debrief you, see if you need any psychological help, blah, 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 blah. That's it. What am I saying that for? I hope y'all want to protect your own selves. Plain and simple. Um, you, you know, it, police comes. You're the first responder. You're the first responder. Police are the second responder. Maybe the ambulance and um, fire department, they're the third responders. By all I know, they all call first responders. But honestly, you are the first responder. Anyway, folks, to sum this all up, it just shows you the difference between those that actually care for our boys in blue and our girls in blue versus those that only care about their political agenda. This ain't the first time Donald Trump has done something like this. He's done plenty of things like this before. It just hasn't been televised. The news not the news are not going to talk about it because they don't want to paint Trump in a picture that he's very patriotic and he's America first. Plain and simple. That's it. That is completely it. It's just like with Lake and Riley. Joe Biden had nothing to say about Lake and Riley because Joe Biden policies is the cause of Lake and Riley's death. The overall White House policies right now that they're pushing right now is the cause of these criminals getting right back out and hurting normal American citizens. Plain and simple. So, all right, y'all, before I get out of here, uh, make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button so this video can be circulated within a YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate you guys, all 1,600 of y'all tuning in. And I know that probably out of that 1,600, 800 is probably YouTube AI and all that because they're trying to see if I'm pushing out hate speech or if I'm doing any type of things like that is going to offend the LGBTQIA Rainbow Coalition crew or anything like that. So, yeah, hit that before we get out of here, folks. And I really appreciate y'all taking time out of y'all midday to hear me talk about this matter. Again, I don't care what religion you are, what you believe in, but have that family, your thoughts and prayer. Although Trump paid Trump then paid off the home mortgage for that family. Got the ten thousand dollar scholarship. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be something that something else is going to happen within his family life. But that still is not going to be replacing that woman's husband. Three years. They were just started, man. So anyway, make sure y'all do that. All right. All right, folks. I am Ty Smith, my Renaissance man, and I hope and pray every last one of you have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, I pray for last one of you guys are in great health, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. God bless you all through Jesus.